So this is going to be an album review from Rick James Busting Out back from 1979. And where Rick James was the one larger than life creative mindset funketeer. Oh, what I start the title track alone was like one of the funkiest, rawest songs ever. Just that intro alone and his voice and the way he harmonized. I mean, he he was so productive, so prolific, such a bad boy. I was a bad cat as a songwriter, as a producer, as a ranger, as a conceptionist. Rick James came out with the goods on this one. And this was one funky cut. I mean, I just loved how we're busting out on the song. And then, you know, the harmony, the groove, the the whole feel of it just was just, Rick James just truly had a way of just bringing it to you, you know, and you felt the cut where he was coming from. It's just one of those cuts. Love, Spacey Love, that whole interlude, how you love that situation. He did this cut with Pat LaBelle on the chorus and whatnot, and you can hear the harmonies and the inflections, and it just was truly... Um, just mesmerizing i mean like really one of those well-arranged incredible songs just had so much theme so much volumes um so much going on with it just so much intricacies he def definitely had a a styling harmony and a groove a vibe and a groove with it that you just could feel from start to finish with it and i just love the tone of it and it just it was just so well composed and just so arranged that you could just feel all of the energy with it. It was just um, really something that just lasted on your mind. You just could feel the depths of it. So I really enjoyed where he was um, coming from on that particular cut and, and, and just the, again, instrumentation. His early Rick James albums, when you hear the instrumentation, production, arrangement, they just sound so fresh and so inviting, and yet they're so strong and powerful. So they... You know, he definitely had an ear for melody, uh, melodic themes, and heavy on the horn arrangements. Then we go to Cop and Blow. And he always had street buzz words and cold and stuff. What I like about this song is the guitar and the way everything just, the groove takes off. It really has a uh, a real feel to it. And I love the way the arrangement is on the guitar and just the way the whole tone is. And again... Um, he was such an underrated producer and arranger because the way he could hear and all the music would just kind of like just unfold like a, like a letter coming out of an envelope. You could definitely feel the array of it and how it just hit you. And he understood getting so much musicality out of the direction he was going in with his sound. So it was just definitely something that was uh, the different nuances, you know, just something that was just powerful. And it just... You know, it just burst you in so many different ways. And that was like one of those cuts that um, you could feel. Um, Jefferson Ball. Wow, what can I say about this song? If you're from Buffalo, New York, from Buffalo, just like Rick James is, you know about Jefferson Avenue. But what I like about this song is the Beatle S, Queen S, the, the tone, the style. It's like a throwback. And in 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 the recording of it and everything, and then the harmony layers, you know, it, and then he has that, you know, because Rick James vocally um, channeled um, the great Eddie Levert of the OJs. You can hear that vocal tone, and it's like a preacher. It's like it's like a congregation, and you feel the energy and the rawness of it, and it's just so powerful. And I always have liked the way he sounded vocally and then they hear the backgrounds and the cadences and then he he was hitting them notes too he's an underrated falsetto singer a lot of people don't ever talk about rick james's falsetto but he had a nice tone you know he could hit that note but jefferson ball it's funny going down jefferson and buffalo you don't you don't necessarily feel the romanticism of it you can you can appreciate the area but uh he doesn't necessarily feel the romanticism of it in this in this concerto the way he did it, but the way he did it, which is so light, so harmonic, and so symphonic. That's what cracked me up about the song. It has such a symphony feel to it and such a lush layering and the way he did it. And yet it's just so smooth. It's just truly one of those songs where I'm sitting there like, man, he really pulled that off and made this sound all lush and chic. You know, it's very, very white-esque like the thing, but he had his own distinctive trademark you know with rick james and 
Such underrated gems like that when you listen to his arrangements as productions. We get to the last song, which was my jam, Fool on the Street. Oh, what do I say? I love that flute. Best, best side of flute of a Bobby Humphrey type of flute to open up a track. I mean, just so smooth. And then you get that Santana middle break with the guitar and the Latin percussion and the break and the horns and the groove. And then Rick with that funk, you know, just I just love the whole feel of that song. And again, you know, truly a way of, of arrangements and such musical embellishments that he just he gives you such a fullness. That's what made Rick James beyond just the king of funk, one of the kings of the music period, because he could truly add so many hybrids and layers to his to his musical stew and make it gel. And that's why he had everybody's head swole out and turned out when you hear his music and why his music has endured, because he truly understood the balance of the groove, the nuances of the beat, but also the arrangements to make chords stretch and give you such a melodic tone and feel. And then the smoothness of his voice on top of that, they gave it that operatic tone and feel. And it just truly had a way of just bringing it. You know, I've always felt that Rick James has never gotten his due. And believe me, he's way more than some than some Dave Chappelle skit and these other things. Because if you listen to the totality and the musicality of him, you can see why he influenced and inspired a lot of artists. A lot of people got a lot of things off him because there was a time a lot of the industry was jacking stuff off of Rick James's grooves and his productions. And you can understand the aesthetic because it truly is timeless. And much props to the Stone City Band, too, because you got to give him credit as due as well. Uh, just great musicianship, great production arrangements, and just songwriting. Rick James was one of the greatest songwriters, underrated songwriter, mind you. Because he was great. He was just truly great. And he's still being robbed from being a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The guy's got classic albums, classic tours, classic songs. He should long ago been in. But anyway, that's my takes and my thoughts and takes on Rick James busting out on the L7, which came out in 1979. Give me your thoughts and takes about this, the albums, the songs. What's your Rick James musical moments and your third feelings and thoughts? And also shout out to Buffalo, New York. Always be low in the house. Feel free to leave your thoughts and your takes. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and the bell rings a new video. And have a funky day. Busting out. Peace.